I was searching for prayers of adoration and I started to write my own and then I thought I can't do this as well as other people. So I have a hymn that uh, was written. I'd like to read it to you. I won't sing it. Just relax. I invite you to close your eyes or read along, whatever it is that you find a way of being prayerful and centered. So uh, participate as you feel. It seems that God's creation is not what was designed. So easy to accept things and then become resigned. To never being different. Wrongs never to be repaired. Will ever come the time when your bounty is fairly shared. We see the world around us now lost and full of sin. What we bemoan in others too often found within. My heart as cold as any. My thoughts for self alone. Where are the seeds of hope that in me you freely sown? What are the reparations that we must make today? What words and deeds can ever right wrongs of yesterday? Life stolen, stunted, ended, in anger, hurt and pain. How can we ever walk side by side again? Act justly. And love mercy, walk humbly with your God. It still challenges us to action, to walk the way you try. To join you in your journey, to usher in your reign. Share grace with broken hearted and live with healing pain. You are the generous sower who still throws out your seed, the, sum, the source of sharing for others, the source of greed. Turn inward thoughts, now outward, as equals, let us stand. In brokenness and sorrow, still guided by your hand. Amen. Inhabitant 
and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burnt again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. And the Gospel reading. Sorry. The Gospel reading, Luke 5, 1 to 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Okay. I'm 
Well, we're getting there.
There always needs to be a connection between the gospel and what's happening for us. When we hear the gospel proclaimed on Sundays when we worship and when we read the Bible, we always witness Jesus proclaiming the word and we make connections with the miracles. And we do that many times over our life. And there are times in worship, during confession time, when we, pub we have a public confession and we declare and feel as if there are things in our lives which, where we need God's grace and transformation. And at times we may feel unworthy if we feel close to God or called into a particular ministry and all of us have a call. We may feel like and we may actually fall down on our knees at different times in our lives and worship Jesus and call him Lord like Peter did. Yet we may also be filled with fear. And so Jesus says to all of us whenever we're feeling inadequate for a task, Fear not, and calls us to be fishers of people. So we have these four actions in Jesus' invitation, an epiphany where we realise, well, something needs to change in our lives, or look at this, it's a new way to go, or a new beginning. And then our reaction and response to that, we can feel inadequate, or we can be turn to God and be filled with love and hope and say, well, God, I can't do it on my own. Help me. And, of course, we will feel reassured by God, by things happening in our lives, or by what our friends say to us, the family. We need reassurance. And out of all of that, we say yes, and we accept our call. We're commissioned to do something, whatever it is. Everything that we do counts and comes together. If one person says no, that makes a difference to everyone else. That's what being a community is about. And this dynamic keeps on repeating itself in our life as a Christian community, again and again, as we embrace it and as we grow in faith. And it's a gentle journey. Jesus leads us step by step until it's God's time for us, until we actually understand what we're supposed to be doing in this life, and we don't get much time actually, before we know it, we're 80. It goes so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, it's sad when you say that, isn't it? But it, it does go fast. <laughs> anyway, when we're ready to leave behind the things we need to let go of and follow Jesus wholeheartedly, that's when things happen. And it can be when we are a child or in our 80s. It can be any time. Look at Sarah and Abraham. So I wonder whether there's something each one of us needs to let go of in our lives. Is there something holding you back from being able to come, become fully what God wants you to be? You know, a fortnight ago the Gospel was about Jesus having to leave behind his hometown so he could grow into all God had called him to be, so he could complete his mission amongst all of us. So perhaps Jesus calls us to leave behind what's stopping us from being transformed into all God wants us to become as a person and as a community. I mean, we often sort of think of ourselves as one way, you know, we've been sort of one type of person for 40, 50, 60 or even 80 or 90 years, but we are the same person, we change. You know, like um, life changes us. And sometimes it takes another person to reveal the changes to us. And that's a gift, to come to know who we become if we're, if we're willing to listen and be still. And offering, it's children who offers us this gift because they're not limited by social and inner filters. They speak their mind and say it as it is. So the other day, you know, my seven-year-old granddaughter said to me, when I read books, I don't skim through them. I ponder on a word, I look it up, I learn how to pronounce it, I go deeper into its meaning, and that's how I learn. So I said, thank you. You know, like, um, it made me realise that, um, yes, it does take me longer to learn because of the way I do things, and I was feeling slow to learn and unworthy because I've been learning a lot of new things lately. But this was really good to hear from my granddaughter. 
unappreciated. It was quite, it was reassuring. So Jesus says something like this to Peter, who's a fisherman. How on earth is he going to fish for people? That's a huge leap. He has to, he's going to have to grow a lot. He was feeling quite unworthy before Jesus. So Jesus says, fear not, and then calls him. So my granddaughter made me feel better about learning new things at my age. I hope, I wonder who's entered the, the countdown. I only have 10 good years left. <laughs> it's pretty sad. I try not to do that, but now and again I think, oh, how many good years have I got left? God, what are you going to ask me to do next? Because um, So yes, we, it's sad, but it's true. We all have to be realistic and practical and keep our feet on the ground. And, and like my granny said, do the best with what we've got. So here's God asking us at our age to do something new. It's quite a challenge. But we can feel confident in responding to God's call to learn new things. So if someone offers you an insight about yourself that stops you feeling unworthy and feels that yes, you've got something to offer, you know, listen to them and receive this gift and thank the person who gives it to you. Don't let your mindset hold you back from responding to God's call in your life. That's the bottom line. I mean, at the moment we could say, oh, lots of people feel hopeless. This, well, how many years have we been in this um, pandemic? They may think, why bother? You know, there's going to be another delay, another postponement, another cancellation. You know, we could get into that type of thinking and um, be really negative about where we're at. But maybe God's slowing us down for a reason so we can ponder on a deeper level instead of skim through what we're doing. God always has a plan and a reason. So I'd listen to that. The delays might be something that are good. It gives us time to explore things on a deeper level. And um, who watched the tennis? Nadell play until 1.30 in the morning. I, I, I had tennis jet lag the next day. <laughs> but um, I tell you what, the newspapers were right. We haven't had much fun for quite a while. And that was fun. And I was going, yes, at 1.30 a.m. in the morning. Go for it. You know, like, um, I mean, as Aussies, we like to support the underdog. And Nadell had injuries and COVID. And he, everyone thinks he's too old for tennis. But there's a good article today about being not too old for tennis, you know, in the, um, I read that, <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> There's room for improvement always. Anyway, Nadell was really close to losing, but he fought back and gave it all and believed in himself. And did you say Middlethick? I'm not quite sure how to say his name, but he was a young man and hoped Nadell would get too tired to be able to keep on fighting on. He, he, no. He even had massages for his cramps, this young guy. He's 25 or something, 24. Anyway, here's Nadell, keep on going. And, um, you know, he rose above this mindset of whatever was holding him back and he won. So that was inspiring for me. I thought, wow, that's pretty good. Now, I've got some images. I think I've only got one, of fishermen, um, about holidays. Did anyone manage to have a, a some sort of break? I advise it, get away from Melbourne for a little while if you can, just anywhere, doesn't matter where. Um, we usually, our family goes down the beach for a week and I, I find the sea a, play of, a place of rest and call and it reminds me of today's reading. I mean, I felt really tired after the, all the two years of lockdowns. Did everyone else feel a bit tired and weary? It's, um, it's quite draining. But as I was walking along the beach, I was pondering about how do we keep on responding to God's call in our lives when we're time and energy and health limited. There's always a mindset that's going to hold us back that we have to overcome. And we need to believe that all things are possible with God. If we can believe in God and depend on the power of prayer, we can go a long way. Because God will find a way and so will we. We're made to adapt and survive. That's, that's pretty basic to humanity, adapting and surviving. But we want to do more than that, survive. We want to be able to be like a, you know, the stump and have the new life bursting out of us. 
So God's call is a walk of faith and we need to believe and let go of what's in the way of accepting our call and let God, because anything is possible with God. And if I had to use a metaphor for a way of thinking that holds us back, since I like mountain climbing, I think of Everest. You know, like um, we tend to think base camp or maybe not even going at all, but God thinks summer. You know, like um, the death zone, you know, going up the top and taking a risk. And I think with God's help, we won't be climbing Mount Everest, but with God's help, I think we can go higher in our expectations and achieve what we might think is impossible. It's so easy to say, it's a great excuse, that's impossible, I can't do that. Maybe that's how Peter felt, and Isaiah. So Jesus would say to each one of us, fear not, from now on you'll be catching people, and we all catch people in different ways. So all things are possible for God, and we all have unique gifts and can make a difference and contribute. And that's the good news from today's Gospel. God's offering each one of us an epiphany in life and invites us to respond. And whenever we feel unworthy, God's going to reassure us and continue to call and commission us. And our call isn't a one-off, it's continual. We keep on building on our gifts and our contributions and growing in wisdom. We're all at the age where we're wise and we have a lot to offer. So may the Lord bless us all on our journey of discipleship. Now we're going to have a little quiet moment. We might skip the questions because we want to move into communion and, and sharing together. There are many times when our story takes in our lives takes unexpected turns as Tina has been pointing out. And a new chapter can throw us off balance and a turn of events can lead us, leave us stumbling, bewildered or even frightened. Sometimes I can be speechless. Maybe it's a shocking, unexpected loss, a close relationship may be shattered, or a bitter reality re um, is revealed. It might have been the pandemic, an undeserved fall from grace, a time when all our beliefs were called into question, when friendships turned fickle, when every choice feels like a dead end, when truth itself is played like a chess piece. There are times when our story and the story of our lives pauses at a blank page and there seems to be nothing to write. Nowhere to go next, no one to tell, and it seems that no one cares. We all know times like these, and we carry our memories in our hearts, and we carry their memories in our hearts. I invite you to glimpse and listen and touch and taste to allow your senses to be windows to a story waiting to be written on your heart, mind and soul. Let us accompany one another into this place where we hear the assurances of God's love, even in the midst of struggle pain and conflict. May the words and stories of encouragement and reassurance 
lift us and renew us. In our journey through our time of communion today, we're going to be taking an ancient Jewish practice of question and answer. I'm going to ask you the questions and invite you to do the answers. I'm going to be in the white this time and you're going to be in the yellow. Why have we gathered here? What story shall we live? When did this story begin? And whose story is this? Why then should we speak of this story? So tell me then this story of this night, of this table. Tell me what he said and did. Tell me what he said and did. So let it be our story, storytelling, our testimony. Let's celebrate the way that grace has shaped our lives. I invite you then to say a prayer of thanks quietly. Hear then the storytellers of all ages whisper with us. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. What is our prayer on this day then? So let us say then the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom of our Lord. You can see on the screen that I've said distribution, but the uh, cups and the uh, bread have already been distributed to you. So you can you take a hold of it now to take off the top. You just use the edge of your finger to lift the edge. There's, a, there's two layers of plastic. 
as you get stuck. I'll ask Tina and Pete to move around and help you out, please. If anybody needs a bit of help, just put your hand up, please. Take the bread from the top. Now, if you have brought your own, you may like to get out your own as well, because together we share in this time. You may not realise, but in the ancient times, people brought the food for communion to share, and what was left over was then taken out to share later. So this is a sharing together. If you need help, just indicate and we will assist. We're not in any hurry. When you are ready, take the bread, the body of Christ, broken for you. Let's take and eat and we may have brought your own cup as well or your own juice or wine. I invite you to get that out now. With those of you who've got the fellowship cups, you now take the second layer off the top. Just peel it back, you don't have to take it off completely. If you need some assistance, just indicate this layer may be a little bit more difficult. People of God together. These are the gifts of God to you, the people of God. <coughs> That's true. satisfying our hungry hearts with this meal. Send us from here to reveal your love in the world. Inspire in us the resolve and the courage, the compassion and the passion to do justice, to love kindness and to walk humbly with you. Amen. I do invite you to share with us any prayers that you might have for one another. And then we'll bring those prayers together. Any of you have a prayer? Talked a lot about age. 
We have two people to indicate you, Barbara Saran and John Baker. Those turning 80. Today. Today. Oh. And John Baker during the week. <coughs> Happy birthday to you. Let's Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Well, we'll have to do that. Have you ever sung happy birthday during prayers for us? Yeah. Well, maybe we should do that for the first time because it's a celebration. Happy birthday to you. Other prayers of thanks and as well as prayers for us. For the people of the time. Granddaughter who's having a cesarean se section and the people of Tom.
the ongoing work of our cluster. And that includes our deliberations. Yes? For those who had their surgeries blown off. Sorry? For those who had their surgeries blown off. I'm getting deaf. For those who had their surgeries blown off. For those who had their surgeries put on hold. Thank you for that one. We're going to bring all of these prayers together. And so we bring the needs of our world before you now, O oh God. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the many who do not have enough, enough food to eat or shelter to keep warm, enough employment or money to pay their bills, enough medicine or medical care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, your grace reaches out to all of us. You call us to live as citizens of heaven, working together with one heart and mind. Strengthen us to live in a manner expressing the good news we have received, offering our lives in service to your kingdom, of your kingdom, such that there is grace enough for all. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now I have uh, some quick fire notices. If you entered the building by anywhere but the front door and haven't checked in, can you please check in to acknowledge that you were here for whatever reason we're using check-ins anymore, but Let's not argue, let's just make sure we get it done. So if you haven't checked in today, make sure you check in before you leave. Uh, there are newsletters from Forest Hill, so some hard copies are out on the table out in the foyer. There is, I'm sure there's other announcements. There's the survey, the cluster survey that's gone out. Please make sure that that is filled in. If you have hard copies um, from the different congregations, I believe there's a congregational rep that you can pass those hard copies to so they can be answered. So for here, it's Anne. Are there any other people that we need to make sure get hard copies of those surveys? No? Uh, are there any other announcements? There's about a thousand. <laughs> I just want to invite a folk to the New Year Retreat on the Wednesday the 16th at Forest Hill. Um, that's from 10.30 to uh, 3 o'clock. It's just a time to reflect on your life's journey at the start of a new year. Uh, there's more information in, the, um, news, in your newsletters. Uh, I just thought to say I'm Corrie, uh, um, to put a face to the name. Um, but I do need to know the numbers by the end of next Sunday uh, so that I can prepare resources without being wasteful. Thank you. Um, some of you know Shishini. Um, she's, going, she's probably at church with her mum. Um, but she's dropping by just for us, for the singing group. Um, we had the singing group sing for us on Christmas Eve and it was a wonderful contribution. Um, and it's a new group that's formed. And I know that many people are from choirs and that. So Shishini's dropping by at 11.30 when you're having your cuppa, if you stay for a cuppa. And just to get a feel for who was a alto and who was a bass, how do you say it? bass, bass? Um, I'm a mezzo-soprano, so I, when people really need help, I'll, you know, drop in. I'm not Marina Pryor, but I'll have a go. So if there's anyone amongst you who wants to have a go with the singing group, we're hoping that we'll be able to sing freely by Easter, Easter Sunday. So we're, between now and then, Shishini, who's a music teacher, is going to help shape the group or give us some help to start off and work out who we are and how to sing together when you know in um, altos and sopranos and basses and um, tenors and whatever other you know voices 
you know, we have, you know, like, um, yeah, so have a go, you know, if you haven't joined the singing group and um, Shishini's going to help us along and I know her mum is a gifted musician too and she may offer some advice, I hope, you know, like um, as long as it's done in a COVID safe way. Um, so yes, 11.30 Shishini will be here. Um, I'll speak out during the, you know, when she arrives and introduce her so you know, but yes. Um, I know some of you already have a lot of training, but some are also beginners, so there's a range of people. So please join us. On Monday afternoon, it's the first Monday of the month, the men here at Blackburn North Nutterwadding meet for lunch at the Mitcham Hotel a bit after 12 o'clock. It has been our, in our discussion to invite all the men from the cluster to that luncheon. We meet, as I said, on the first Monday of each month. So this is a great opportunity to open up uh, for everybody and we want to include the ladies as well uh, if they feel like they'd like to come then that is also uh, okay and we'd love if you have any queries we'd love you to talk to us after the meeting uh, both myself John Baker and Jeff Randall we'd be happy to talk to you and discuss any needs or any suggestions that you might have. Okay, thank you very much. Well, it's lovely to see you all. Good morning. And um, from Anak, we usually call it, we used to call this time um, our joys and concerns, sharing joys and concerns. There is something that um, I have to report to you that the Reverend John Boatman, known to many of you and loved by many, um, passed away on Friday night. We keep him and his family and those who especially were close to him in our prayers. Um, just repeating what uh, was mentioned, the um, survey it's going around at the moment. Don't put it in the bottom drawer. It's really important. It makes us think when we are responding to it. And um, as Pete said, if you have a paper survey, could it please go to Anne? From, this is from Banuk. Um, by next Sunday, is that right? Anne? By today. Oh, by today. Oh, goodness. I hope you've done it. And as ASAP for the online surveys, and you might already have seen that uh, there is now facility for um, more than one person to do the uh, online survey from the one computer. So that's no longer a problem. Um, with love to the world, copies are available for Banak people. Uh, now from Eleanor. You can see her this morning. She has them with her. And the secret's out. I was going to announce that at morning tea time we will, in our usual way, be recognising and celebrating some big events. So if there are any other big events around at this time, so we'd love to know about that and celebrate them as well. And uh, over morning tea held in the fellowship room, a COVID safe way, and with the uh, opportunity to go outside into the garden if you would like to do that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh. You never hear enough from me, do you? <laughs> Just in terms of the COVID, uh, restrictions, please do not bring your cuppers into the foyer. Um, we're asking you uh, when you get a cuppa, leave your mask on until you sit down in a uh, around the tables, 
or else take your cover outside. If you need help to go outside and bring a chair and you want to sit down outside, uh, ask somebody and we will bring some chairs out for you. There's plenty of shaded spots outside that's really important to do. There is a large number of you and we need to make sure that we don't uh, put each other at risk. I know you're concerned about each other's well-being, so that means you don't take a cover and then move around with your mask off. Uh, you need to get into a one spot. If you do need to go and talk to someone, have a cover in a spot you're having it, and if you're talking to a group, stay with them, then put your mask on, and then talk to people later with your mask on. Okay. One other request if I may. Name badges. If you haven't got a name, but na a name badge, can you speak to the relevant person in your congregation to get one? Because behind masks, it's very hard to tell sometimes who you are. And secondly, um, to help Pete and Tina and myself get to know who you are. We still, because of the distance and COVID, we're still finding it takes time to get to know your names. So you will help us by wearing your name badges. And anybody who's new will also be helped by that too. Thank you. And that's it. No more. <laughs> Uh, if you want any more news and information, read your newsletters because uh, yeah. I know there's a few things in there. <laughs> so the, the newsletters, if you haven't thanked your newsletter writers and uh, make sure you, you make a beeline for them at some point and from a COVID safe distance, thank them. Um, we, we understand also that we are in a time of um, COVID, we're not passing around bowls of offering. There is an offering um, bowl at the door, but it won't be passed around. If you have offering, and in a normal currency form, please uh, pop it in there. But if you're using anything from uh, electronic funds transfer, we want to acknowledge that. If you're dropping Bitcoin uh, through as well, you can, <laughs> or any of the other side of currencies, they're most welcome to. Um, but would you pray with me as we give thanks for the offering, knowing that it's not just money, knowing that it's time and passion and who you are. Merciful God, the gifts that we bring are so small in comparison to the vast needs of our world. Nowhere near enough to save the thousands dying of starvation all around the world, or even to meet the needs of the hungry and homeless in our own cities. Yet we have bought what we can. As you once multiplied the five small loaves and two fish, multiply these gifts as well, so that once again the hungry may receive all they need and more. Amen. We're about to sing, I danced in the morning. So if you uh, warmed up, no, just kidding, you can dance if you want. <laughs>
pray this with you, if you can read that. We go in peace with the love of God, in the power of the Spirit. May the Lord bless and guard us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen.